Welcome to LA Editor, Alabama King. Like, subscribe, follow me on this journey. Okay, get ready. Today we're gonna talk about the birds and the bees of the pecan trees. <laughs> the reason this is important is because it plays an important part into how you're gonna choose your varietals. Because just because you buy two pecan trees or you buy one pecan tree does not mean that you're gonna create any nuts whatsoever. <laughs> They're very, very picky. First of all, uh, a pecan tree cannot fertilize itself. Uh, well, that's not exactly true. Some varietals can fertilize themselves, but they don't do a great job at it. And the nuts that are produced from pecan trees that fertilize themselves are, you know, they're not full, the, the, it doesn't fill out the nut completely. They're not beautiful nuts and it's just not a good product. Also, you don't get a whole lot of nuts. So they're set up to pollinate, to cross pollinate and use multiple varietals to do it. Um, so the way it works is you've got two different types of pecan trees. You have a type one pecan tree and you have a type two pecan trees. And the difference is when they produce pollen and when they receive pollen. It produces pollen with something called a catkin. A catkin is like this long tendrily shaped, um, I don't know, it looks like, you know if you had like a flail that had all those long like metal chains hanging off of it and you had a whole lot of them, and, you know, people whip their backs and stuff with the, way, the flails, you know, and religious ceremonies and stuff and beat them. So that's what one of these things looks like. But um, it's just like these long tails. You've got, you know, a few of them and they're together and they produce pollen and the pollen blows through the wind and then it hopefully comes in contact with another organ on a different pecan tree called a nutlet. The nutlet receives the pollen and creates nuts. One of the cool little facts about this is that a pecan tree can actually fertilize another pecan tree around two miles away, which is kind of cool. When you're putting together a commercial orchard, uh, you want to actually have your trees closer than two miles away. Uh, the trees that need to pollinate each other should probably be no more than about 150 feet from one another. Um, I've designed my orchard that way. Uh, and the reason is that you want lots of nuts, you want lots of pollen. That's one of the things that, you know, helps ensure that you're gonna have lots of nuts um, and you're gonna have a good harvest is that you have well-pollinated uh, pecan trees. Basically, catkins and nutlets show up in the spring. That's when they're reproducing. A type one tree will create a catkin first and then a nutlet second. And a type two tree will create the nutlet first and the catkin second. Uh, the pecan tree does not typically have nutlets and catkins at the same time. So it's either growing catkins or it's growing nutlets. There are, like I said, exceptions to that. There are some pecan trees that fertilize themselves, but when it comes to commercial production, you want different varietals for fertilizing. It's just better nuts. If you want good nuts, that's how you wanna do it. So type one trees produce catkin first in the spring and the nutlet second. Type two trees produce the, the nutlet first and the catkin second. So typically when you're looking to buy pecan trees, you're gonna match a type one tree up with a type two tree. And that way they'll be able to fertilize one another. But it's a little more complicated than that because a varietal will typically uh, create catkins and nutlets at the same time every single year, but every single varietal is different and does that at different times. So you could actually have a type one tree and a type two tree and they're poor pollination sources for one another because one's creating that catkin at the very, very beginning of you know the spring, but the type two plant, it's nutlet, is active you know the second month into spring and so by the time that nutlet comes up the catkin on the other tree has already stopped producing pollen and so the nutlet never has an opportunity to pick up any pollen so because of that you have to be careful what sort of varietals you choose and you need to use a pollination chart so that you get the the best type one tree to match with 
the best type two tree. A pollination chart is kind of a cheat sheet. It allows you to see what varietals are producing pollen when and what varietals are receiving pollen when. Referencing the pollination chart allows you to quickly determine what varietals are compatible. I got Lakota here. My pollinators are Amling and Gafford. And if you look right here where they intersect, you can see if they're compatible. Now here with Amling, the whole box is covered. So Amling is an excellent pollination source for Lakota. Just because I picked an excellent pollinator for Lakota, doesn't mean that Lakota will be an excellent pollinator for Amling. So you wanna make sure you check your pollination chart and make sure it goes both ways because you want both trees, all your trees to be making as many nuts as you possibly can. Um, and just because Amling is a good pollination source for Lakota does not mean that Lakota will be a good pollination source for Amling. However, it is. And if you look right here, you can see Lakota is an excellent pollen source for Amling and Gafford. The other varietal I chose was Gafford. Now Gafford produces pollen for half of the time that Lakota is receiving pollen. So it's not an excellent pollinator, but it's a good pollinator. If I go down here with Lakota, and I go down to this varietal called Gift Pack, these two are not compatible. So if I planted them, I'm not getting any nuts. That's why it's important to follow the pollination chart. Get the varietals that overlap the most and you should have plenty of nuts. The reason I picked these varietals, Amling and Gafford, was specifically as pollinators, to pollinate my main crop. And uh, also I picked them because they're disease resistant plants. And because I'm not going down to the property very often, I need something that's gonna be hardy enough to withstand the conditions that they're gonna have to withstand, which is basically poor management practices by me. So that's why I chose these trees. We'll see how they do. I've been doing assessments on my trees so far, and uh, I, I don't know how bare root Amling and Gafford would do, but the potted trees haven't done so well. Maybe it was because they were so small. I don't know. Um, and specifically, Gafford has not done so well. So of my three varietals, Lakota, Amling, and Gafford, I think the actual, the weakest tree, the weakest varietal, as far as survivability so far for me has been uh, Gafford. The Amlings actually, they're hanging in there. So we'll see. Um, I am looking at another varietal called Oconee, which is an excellent pollination source for Lakota. And um, I'll probably be replacing my uh, Gaffords with Oconee. And they're also disease resistant plants, but that's later on in the future. They say that you should actually choose three varietals, your main crop and two pollinators for that. And the reason is pecan trees do something called alternate bearing. Some trees are worse than others, uh, but you'll have a really good crop year where it's doing really, really well. And then the next year it won't produce as many nuts. Well, it's the same for pollen. So I've got Amling and I've got Gafford. So if Amling is not producing a lot of pollen that season, Gafford can pick it up and make up for whatever pollen that Amling isn't creating. So that's why I did that. It's confusing, uh, it's complicated, but hopefully I've helped you out a little bit. Thanks for watching LA Editor, Alabama King. If you wanna ask a question, offer some tips or tricks, or just say hi, just leave it in the comment section below. And guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the alerts button so you'll know every time we drop a new video.